Hello, in this lecture, I would like to introduce a artificial neural networks. Artificial neural networks. And probably you will learn how to drive it. Understanding the each component of the neural networks clearly. Now we have a input parameters are received at input layer and also output parameters are calculated and produced at output layer and these two layers are visible are visible as you see here input parameters are received then you can see that what kind of input parameter with the, with which value which magnitude and also you see what's the output values, output parameters that you calculated and produced at output layer. But the layers in the middle cannot show every calculation to you. The, the numbers here in neurons or neural values, neural values and neural values are calculated but you can see it, how those neural values and nodal values are calculated not just meaning that it's complicated but just meaning that you can see it. this is invisible layers invisible layers that's why we call the layers in the middle hidden layers hidden layers that's the only reasons so that the neural networks consist of input layer, one input layer and one output layer having as many as as many parameters as, as, as you need to provide into the um, neural networks and you can also calculate and produce as many output parameters you want as you want and also the um, input the hidden layers can be as many as you want in order for you to have a accurate training of the networks that if you have a many layers or deep layers you can call that this is a deep neural networks whereas you have a couple of layers then you can say that shallow neural networks so the whether it is deep or shallow depends on how many hidden layers you have in the neural networks and that really depends on how many in, uh, the hidden layers are needed it really depends on the complexity of the data and if you have the complex data to fit and to to match to predict then you probably need as many layers as possible and you you want to have a as many neurons downwards here as possible the the circle here indicates a neurons we call that neurons or you know, somebody may refer that as nodal values here the value inside from the node and the values from neuron also called neural values here yeah? So this circle, circle represent new neurons and node and the value in the circles is just indicates the neural value or nodal value. Okay? And, and for this, this is input neural values and this is output neural values. Don't have to be in, in input layer and output layer. It could be anywhere in the networks as long as you have this relationships this circle is calculated based on this circle then this could be a neural out, uh, output and this could be a neural input it really doesn't matter where you your neurons and your circles are located in the in the networks and this is how your network looks like and here obviously we have a input layer and output layer and we have a hidden layers here and we have a neurons ok 
okay and we have a bunch of straight line connects you know here and there so we have here connects here and we're gonna say that this straight line connects the input input layer to the first layer let me just clear this out to make a room to write further information on it see here this is input layer input layer and this is first hidden layer hidden layer I would say just from now on hidden layer hidden layer so that uh, this straight lines connects those circles neurons and nodes from input layer to first hidden layer and the first hidden layer is connected to second hidden layer in here and so on so forth and here you are connecting the the one before the last layer here one before the last layer to the upper layer here using all this straight line okay so all this straight line just means that straight equations first order linear equations linear equations so linear equations can be expressed by ax plus b in general and we're gonna we're gonna use w instead of a and b just b so that your output neural value in circle is equal to w x plus b so w is similar to the a which indicates slope or weights and x is nothing more than a the neural value of the previous layer this is I will say here neural value of the previous layer previous hidden layer if you will okay so this is the input and this is the output for this relationships for this relationships this is input and this is output for this relationship this is input and this is output and so on and so forth so you have a bunch of input output relationships in the neural networks it how many of the uh, linear relationship exist it depends on how deep is your neural networks and how many neurons you have in your neural networks and also how many input parameters you have at input layers and how many output parameters you're going to produce at output layer the number of layers number of neurons and number of inputs and outputs really determine the size of the neural networks also determines the number of um, straight line that connects two circles here and bunch of them here yeah, this is what shapes your neural networks so let me add a few more comments with this straight line let's take a look at this straight line here anything can be taken or this or this whichever and you are having a linear relationships and this is a output of the next layer I'll say output just output 
and this is a input neural value so for this this is input neural value which is the input parameters and this is output neural value and this is input neural value for this straight line and this is a output neural value for this straight line, straight line and so on and so forth and you have a straight line and this is all that means and the slope is this weight and this is bias B so the, all the straight line represent this relationships with the weight is a slope uh, similar to the A in mathemat in, ge in general mathematic expressions and B just the intercepts in which is referred to as a bias in neural networks. So we're gonna call weight and bias from now on instead of a slope and intercepts, but anyway they are the same concepts. Same do same thing to your neural networks. And W and B is is defining the relationships the linear relationships between these two neural values or nodal values and of course we have as many as as many as you have a straight line that connects all the neural values input neural values and output neural values and that straight line has all each straight line has a one w and one b that means you have so many w's and b's in this neural networks you know the number of um, w is is probably a number of um, straight lines as you can see over there so they have all these W weights and B's are different numbers, different numbers. Those are um, their inputs are and outputs are different from those that you have over here. So your input values and output values are different from those one that you have over here, right? So the W W is all different depending on which straight line, straight line you are looking at, but B, B is a little bit different. B, okay, you have here W and B, the weight and bias are as many as straight lines, because the straight lines connects all the circles, which are defined by W's and B's. So that here, all the W, however, are different for all these straight lines for this W this W and this W whatever here this W this W that connects between the circles are different and here same thing this W that defines this circle and this circle this neurons and this neurons and this neurons and this neurons and this neurons are all different so that you have as many uh, you have many uh, W's it depends on how many straight lines you have and also depends on how big your neural networks are for example if you have so big large neural networks you're going to have so many strain straight lines and you're going to have so many devils which are all different but the b each layer for example you have one b here and you have another b here and you have another b here i'll say one and two and three whatever so on so forth so that the b is in between all these neurons are different and you have another b here and we'll say b b11 whatever so i just i just tell you how to name those b's and w's later but currently i'm trying to say that all these b's is given to one neurons here per each layer here and you have one b's per each layer so that you have another one here so one B's are given to each neurons per layer. However, you have so many W's that defines these straight lines. Okay. So we have a W for all straight lines. But 
B for each neurons circle per layer per layer say per layer okay per layer do you follow me okay per layer so anyway all these W's and B's will define your straight lines that connect the neurons of the previous layer to the neurons of the next layer. If you take a look at this, this is the neurons of previous layer. It's connected to the neurons of next layer by W and by B's. And this is how your neural networks is working. And that is what we have to determine through the process called training. Now we're going to take a look at how we're going to do perform trainings. Trainings is a process in which we are finding all these W's and B's based on the big data. Let's take a look at what weights do for us in the neural networks. Weights define the inference of the each neurons input and the neurons of next output next layer so that influence each neurons input say of the previous layer layers on the outputs of the next neurons of the next layers to say that so that again we have a neurons previous layer and neurons of the next layers are connected by this straight line which are defined by W X plus B and say graphically this is this and this is this Okay, graphically. So that this W is the just contributions or inference of this this neuron on this neuron. So it's easier to see graphically. Right? So if this is big, then your inference of this input neurons on this is large, vice versa. And this is what your weights is doing for neural networks and this W just also indicates the um, how your output is influenced by which facts is parameters which feature index or say which feature index input feature index So this is also we can obtain by using NCA command from MATLAB and I'm going to take a look at that later as well. Anyway, right now the weights define the inference of the circle, previous layer and the circle of the next layers. Thereby defining or determining behavior of each neurons. Okay, this is what your weights is doing so that the inputs with the zero weights does not influence output at all output of the next layers at all however with the large large weights has a large influence of the previous neuron on next neurons as well so that's what you have to understand with the weights with the weights that's why we call it weights instead of slope okay different priorities are assigned to different neurons input by adjusting weights this is what happened during correction process correction process we're gonna learn it later and during back propagations we are correcting the weights which were assigned randomly in the beginning of the 
neural networks and we're gonna we're gonna use a um, back propagation techniques and we're gonna correct the, the weights and this is what happened okay and we're gonna use a different priorities and see which weights can provide the best weights that connects from previous circle and the next circle okay and bias is also very important parameters in defining neural networks so where we're gonna have a output and we're gonna subtract some numbers some constants or add some constant from a neural networks to establish outputs centered on some points and what what happens is here your uh, linear relationship represented by the straight line connects your circles neurons here for example this this is a previous neuron here I will say red circle here and you have a blue circle which is output to the next layer here and we have a linear relationships here linear relationships right so this linear, linear linear relationships in the neural networks as defined by the W and B and the slope is W and this is the um, kind of uh, contributions or influence of the input on output and here we have a bias B bias B is going up when you add to the neural values and it's gonna go down when you subtract from neural values so it goes up like this when you add two neural networks and goes down when you subtract from neural networks so this uh, the the bias helps understand whether the neural outputs are above normal or below normal so you can just can adjust your your um, output value you, you can regulate the output values it depends on some given standard for example we know that likelihood with some some values as you see over there by adjusting a bias so this is a bias is very important as i told you bias is given one bias is given one circum one neural value per each each layer one one bias is given here here b b1 b2 and so on so forth and say b11 b2 the reason i put b11 is that try to indicate that this b11 is different from this b1 so you have another one which is different from this and this so there you have one one b which is bias for circle per layer so you have a um, if you have a how many you don't see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten then you have a um, ten ten bias for that particular hidden layer one two one ten something like that and you have a different line vector here line vector here line vector and so on and so forth